The fifth and final phase of Guernsey Water's £35 million upgrade to provide the most effective and appropriate long-term waste disposal solution for the island is now complete. This phase involved replacing the 45-year-old and the 110-year-old long and short sea outfall pipes that were seriously threatening the ability of the island to deal with its waste water. A scientific study determined Guernsey Water's plans were the best solution for the island. The pipes, from a Norwegian manufacturer, were towed by barge arriving in May. Other high-tech marine equipment also arrived to help complete the complicated logistical work. The pipes themselves were each 500 metres long and totaled more than four kilometres. They had to be prepared by installing concrete collars onto the pipes, which is basically to give them one protection, but more importantly, the weight, because polyethylene does float, and so it's the concrete collars that provide the weight that makes sure that they stay uh, where we ultimately put them on the seabed. The fitting of the concrete collars was done offshore. This was unusual but necessary because of the lack of onshore facilities on the island, but made it more complicated. The concrete collars, which in total weighed 3,115 tonnes, had to be carefully put around the length of the pipes. At the same time, a mile-long trench was dredged using a large barge-mounted backhoe dredger. Hard bedrock over a 100-metre section was discovered once work had started. That meant a different technique had to be used, rather than the one planned. That was a 24-7 operation, which obviously had to be done fairly carefully. These machines are very expensive to, uh, to bring in, and we wanted them to be running as much as possible. So 27-hour working is, is, is done for that, which also helps with tides. It can work through tides as well. That excavated a trench maybe four metres deep and approximately 20 to 30 metres wide, in which the, both pipes could be installed um, once they were prepared. The pipes themselves were pieced into two sections, or a maximum of two sections each, so just under a kilometre each, and laid from offshore coming towards the shore. We first did the, the long sea outfall, which was in five pieces, uh, ultimately, and that was laid, and then that was followed very quickly on by the short sea outfall, which is the storm outfall, which was put in place in, in three lengths. At the same time, onshore pipes were laid to connect the new offshore pipes to the Belgrave Waste Water Centre. These were laid under the road, and as a precaution, a temporary storm outfall pipe bridge had to be constructed over the main road in case there was excess storm water, but luckily this never needed to be used. One new addition was building a chamber to enclose all the pipework, and it had to be built in a particular way to stop water coming up and flooding the wastewater centre and surrounding area. This meant placing it above the highest watermark and above the seawall. This has been designed to blend into the surroundings by cladding it in local granite. The project means that the island's disposal of wastewater is now much cleaner, and it complies with the main principles of EU and UK directives in a cost-effective and sustainable way. The screening works and storm tanks removes all of the non-biodegradable items in the flow, where, previously, they were discharged into the Little Russell. The sea can deal with that flow and deal with the effluent that, that comes through there, so the public will see a difference in terms of the performance of the, the, uh, the outfall and what, what, what may potentially come back to shore and the risk will be reduced significantly. With the project complete, the old storm outfall pipes have now been taken away and the beach returned to how it was before, if not better. £35 million later, the public will see a difference in the quality of the island's coastal waters. Ironically, because the majority of the work is now buried underground, people will not actually see the full extent of this investment. But that's the success of the project. The island now has a robust and safe wastewater treatment strategy that will serve generations to come.